Good morning, folks. Our shot of the day comes out of Colombia from Alberto Quijano Vodniza. Terrific color shot of Comet Ison, still holding together for the dive in November. About 30 years ago, one of the most incredible volcanic sites captured on film blew Mount St. Helens apart. Compare post eruption to now, and you can see life's slow green encroachment. For those following Fukushima, you'll be getting a ton more info than usual soon, I hope, given the popular uproar over the rod removal I shared about two weeks ago. Next month, if you'll remember, they will begin the removal process, but global experts warn that these rods are possibly going to snap, causing locational spikes in radiation and potential mass scale release into the environment. Then we have the ore fish. I discussed this briefly in Fly on the Wall yesterday. First one was 18 feet they found in California, now 14. They say they can grow to be up to 50 feet and likely sparked all the sea serpent myths in history. Someone should tell them a real 50 foot sea monster is not something you call a myth. But I'm hopeful this next part is. It's a well known myth in parts of Asia that when these things begin to come ashore, the water is soon to follow. This happened in Japan 2010. Happy thoughts please. Let's get that rain up to Sydney and a bit north, wipe away all that fire danger. It does look like it's trying. France, Italy, Germany taking the brunt of that leading edge of that low. Storms are causing isolated localities some serious issues. Here's Raymond, developed off the Mexican coastline, but Shear is cannibalizing this one as well. First let's see the cold streaking down into the US, but there's a noticeable and definitive separation between the moisture masses keeping that southeast much warmer than everyone else from the moisture from Raymond. Don't forget about the typhoon in the West Pacific. Make that too as one of his fans from yesterday beefed up and now has a track all his own. Looking at the sunspots, and only the sunspots, you'd say, ah, solar maximum. We have a solid sunspot count, a few complexing groups trailing the rest and appearing to have the magnetic complexity between umbras and proximity that's required for large solar flares. But we're not getting them. This is less than last week's uptick, and even that didn't really do our star any justice. Looking at 24 hours of solar wind from ACE, this is somewhat unhelpful. Let's go three days, that's a bit better. You can see the speed in yellow is definitively falling. So let's go out a full week, and now we can see the full, now ended, coronal hole stream. In yellow and green, you see the plasma speed and temperature rise up sharply and then trail away with the signature leading density spike in orange out ahead, the best signal of such a stream. As usual, the geomagnetic instability up there in red follows the density spike. Earth's umbral and coronal magnetic fields. Just went an itty bitty bit nuts yesterday. Yeah, put that in your pocket for the coronal hole power, which you'll remember on the right there, the scale. Greens and blues with a dot of yellow when we last spoke, but the situation has intensified significantly. We now have increasing power over a 24 hour period with new incoming openings. Mars and Neptune opposing with Mercury conjoined Saturn with a near full moon opposed to them. Gulf of California got us going again. There are a number of other locations taking upticks including Indonesia and the Middle East. Got the watch factors? Sunspots. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.